हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर आशीष शर्मा आई प्रिपेयर्ड वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल्स अबाउट वैलिडेशन पैरामीटर्स ऑफ एनालिटिकल मेथड्स एज पर आई सी एच गाइडलाइंस दिस ट्यूटोरियल्स इनकॉर्पोरेट डिटेल्ड इंसाइट ऑफ द आई सी एच गाइडलाइंस एसोसिएटेड विद वैलिडेशन ऑफ एनालिटिकल मैथड्स वन ऑफ दीज गाइडलाइंस इज क्यू टू ए विच डिफाइंस द वेरियस टर्मिनोलॉजीज यूज इन एनालिटिकल मैथड वैलिडेशन वाइल अनदर वन क्यू टू बी एक्सप्लेन्स ऑल दीज वैलिडेशन पैरामीटर्स इन डिटेल्स दीज ट्यूटोरियल्स वर डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट्स पार्ट वन इंक्लूड्स बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ एनालिटिकल मैथड वैलिडेशन एंड एक्सप्लेन्स ऑफ फर्स्ट टू पैरामीटर्स ऑफ मैथड वैलिडेशन विच आर स्पेसिफिसिटी एंड लीनियरिटी वाइल सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ दिस ट्यूटोरियल इंक्लूड्स रेंज एक्यूरेसी प्रसिजन एल ओ डी एल ओ क्यू रॉबस्टनेस एंड सिस्टम सुटेबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया एज वी नो दैट स्टेबिलिटी स्टडीज ऑफ ड्रग सब्सटांसिस एंड ड्रग प्रोडक्ट्स आर द हार्ट ऑफ आई सी एच गाइडलाइंस हेयर आई वुड लाइक टू एम्फेसाइज दैट स्टेबिलिटी स्टडीज कैन नॉट बी परफॉर्म एट ऑल विदाउट एनालिटिकल टेक्निक्स और इन अदर वर्ड्स वी कैन से दैट डेटा फॉर स्टेबिलिटी स्टडीज कैन नॉट बी जनरेटेड फॉर एन डी ए एप्लीकेशन विदाउट एनालिटिकल मैथड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल द आइडेंटिफिकेशन एंड क्वान्टिफिकेशन ऑफ ए पी आई वी नीड एनालिटिकल मैथड्स नो वन कैन परफॉर्म आइडेंटिफिकेशन एंड क्वान्टिफिकेशन ऑफ डिग्रेडेड प्रोडक्ट्स विदाउट एनालिटिकल मैथड्स मोर ओवर फॉर डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ शेल्फ लाइफ of drug substances we need to track the degradation of api and this is possible with analytical methods only apart from this if we want to check the incompatibility of api with excipients and degraded products we will have to use analytical methods thus i feel this is worth spending time to study analytical method development and validation these videos will be focused on analytical method validation if you want me to prepare a different video on analytical method development kindly mention in comment box the first ics guideline regarding analytical method validation is q2a which presents only definitions of various terminologies used in validation of analytical methods i would skip narrating these definitions because these definitions will be automatically be covered in the detailed explanation of various parameters of analytical method validation in the subsequent sections This slide shows a glimpse of various type of pharmaceutical analytical processor and associated methods which are to be validated. We can categorize these processors into four major categories. First one is the identification test which are performed to ensure the identity of an API in a sample. identification tests are very important in case of raw material as well we need to confirm the identity of whatever chemicals we are purchased for this we can perform the various qualitative chemical test we can use various spectroscopic methods for example ftir nmr and mass spectroscopy some of the chemist use chromatographic techniques for the same purpose these chromatographic techniques include tlc hplc hptlc etc next category is 
quantitative test for impurities. The analytical techniques which can be used to quantify impurities are UV visible spectrophotometer, HPTLC, HPLC, fluorimeter. In case if impurities are conductive of electric charge, electrochemical analytical methods such as conductometer, potentiometer can also be used. If impurities are sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium, you can use flame photometer. While to quantify heavy metals, atomic absorption spectroscopy is used. The next category is limits test which are performed to confirm the permissible limit of certain impurities. For example, limit test for arsenic, lead, chloride and iron. All right. Now very important section of this discussion is quantitative test of the active pharmaceutical moieties which are also known as assay processors. The analytical techniques which are used to quantify impurities, similar techniques can be used for assay of APIs. Viewers may have this question that are heavy metals utilized as API? Answer is of course yes. The certain homeopathic medicines use heavy metals as API which can be quantified by atomic absorption spectroscopy. Now I am coming on the explanation about validation of analytical methods. When I searched the term validation on Google, it shows very simple definition that the action of checking or proving the validity or accuracy of something. But when I associate the term validation with pharmaceutical analysis, it appears little bit complex. Validation is the process of establishing documentary evidences demonstrating that a procedure, process or activity carried out in testing and then production maintains the desired level of compliance at all stages. This definition looks very complex and difficult to associate it with analytical processors. What in my view validation is assuring that the process will consistently produce the expected result. That's it. For example, if a solution of a drug shows absorbance 0 0.250 at a particular wavelength at one time, then validation assures that every time following the identical analytical conditions, solution of the drug will show the same absorbance. This is the validation. This means your analytical methods as well as spectrophotometer or your analytical instrument both are validated. Another example is if a drug is showing retention time 3 minutes in a HPLC run in the identical chromatographic conditions this particular drug will show same retention time as 3 minutes within permissible limit. This is the validation. So the take home message is that the validation assure that we will consistently produce the expected result by our analytical methods. Now I think you can feel that validation of analytical methods give confidence about the particular data or results to various stakeholders from analytical chemist to regulatory authorities. Now I will explain the various parameters of analytical method validation one by one. First one is specificity, second one is linearity, third range, 
फोर्थ एक्यूरेसी फिफ्थ प्रसिजन सिक्स डिटेक्शन लिमिट सेवेंथ वन इज क्वान्टिटेशन लिमिट एट्थ वन इज रॉबस्टनेस एंड द लास्ट वन इज सिस्टम सुटेबिलिटी टेस्टिंग स्पेसिफिसिटी इज द फर्स्ट पैरामीटर ऑफ एनालिटिकल मेथड वैलिडेशन स्पेसिफिसिटी इज द एबिलिटी टू असेस द ए पी आई और एनालाइट अन एक्वीवोकली और फुल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस और विदाउट एनी डाउट इन द प्रजेंस ऑफ अदर कॉम्पोनेंट्स विच मे बी एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी प्रजेंट हेयर द मीनिंग ऑफ एबिलिटी ऑफ असेसिंग इज डिटेक्शन एंड क्वान्टिफिकेशन ऑफ एनालाइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ एन एनालाइट इज आइडेंटिफाइंग and quantifying a drug in a tablet here we all know that apart from an api or drug a tablet might have other excipients such as diluents glidants colorants opacifier film coating materials preservatives etc in this case the analytical method should be developed in such a manner that it should be able to respond or generate distinct prominent signal as compared to the other excipients to detect and quantify the target drug if i take another example of chromatographic separation by hplc the chromatographic method should be developed in such a way that it must show well resolved api's peak in a very distinctive manner as compared to the peaks of other excipients which may be present in the sample data for specificity for an analytical method are produced or submitted at two stages one is for identification and another one is for assay and impurity test for identification the analytical method should be specific enough to discriminate between compounds of closely related structures which are likely to be present for example we can use tlc ftir nmr hplc for identification of an api or impurity in tlc we consider differences in rf values while in case of ftir this difference is between various ir signals associated with particular functional groups in case of nmr differences between chemical shift values is considered for identification purpose this was about the specificity in case of identification stage another stage where specificity is applied is assay and impurity test analytical methods should be specific while performing assay and impurity tests we take an example of chromatographic separation the representative chromatographs should be used to demonstrate the specificity of analyte importantly peaks in these chromatographs must be well resolved and properly labeled so that we can show to regulatory agencies that particular analytical method used in the assay of an api can discriminate api from impurities i hope this is clear now that investigation of specificity of an analytical method should be conducted during validation of identification test determination of impurities and assay the specificity of an analytical procedure is demonstrated in two ways the first one when impurities are available and known the second one when impurities are not available in this slide i will explain how we can show specificity of an analytical method when impurities are known and available in this case differences of the responses of analytical instrument for an api in the presence of impurities and or excipients is demonstrated 
I can explain this by taking example of HPLC as an analytical method to show the specificity of a HPLC method for an API. First HPLC run is performed for a standard API only. In this case, chromatograph shows only one peak at 1.8 minute RT corresponds to API only. The second HPLC run is performed after spiking the API samples with impurities or excipients in the identical chromatographic conditions. The resulted chromatograph must show that well resolved and unaffected API peaks along with peaks of impurities and excipients. It is always good to have prominent API peak as compared to peaks of impurities. In this case, two types of data can be submitted, one for assay and another for impurity test. For assay, API peak should be unaffected in the presence of impurities. For impurity test, analyst has to demonstrate separation of the peaks of these impurities individually and or from API. In this slide, we will see that how we can show the specificity of an analytical method when impurities are not available. In this case, specificity may be demonstrated by comparing the test results of samples containing impurities or degradation products with the results of a second well characterized analytical procedure. This means we will use two independent analytical methods to verify that if a single method is showing an impurity. It has to be confirmed by another analytical method. We can take example of TLC, HPLC as two independent analytical methods. Firstly, we can develop a TLC chromatogram to find out and identify the impurity. Secondly, we will perform HPLC run to confirm and verify the impurity. This means if TLC chromatogram shows an impurity, it must appear in HPLC chromatogram also. Let me brief you about TLC for those who need to know about it. First spot in TLC must be of API standard. The second spot should be of co-spot and third spot consists of drug substance or drug product under test. I used a word co-spot in the last sentence. What does it mean? Co-spot means at same spot on TLC you put API standard and a drug substance or drug product under test. After spotting, we develop a TLC chromatogram and calculate RF values. This this, this is how we can identify impurity. Now we can perform HPLC to confirm the impurity. First HPLC run is performed with API standard only, which shows RT for example at 1.8 min minutes. Then second run is performed with drug substances or drug products under test. If this sample has any impurity, it would be observed in the chromatogram for example at 1.3 minutes in the red color along with the peaks of API standard. By comparing both of the HPLC run, we can confirm the presence of an impurity. Here TLC spot and HPLC peak of the API is well separated from the TLC spot and HPLC peaks of impurity. Moreover, HPLC peak of API is prominent as compared to impurity peak. Here both of the independent analytical methods confirm the presence of impurity. This is the way by which we can show the specificity of analytical procedures when impurities are not available. 
linear t is the second parameter of analytical method validation. Linear t means the responses of analytical instrument or techniques must be linear with the concentrations of the drug. Here response depends upon which analytical technique is being used. For example, if we are using UV visual spectroscopy, the response would be absorbance. If we are using HPLC, the response would be area under the peak. Left side of the slide shows a straight line curve which represent linearity between responses of the analytical instrument and drug concentrations. For submission the linearity data as per ICH guidelines, we need to take minimum 5 concentrations of drug and record the response of each concentration. For each concentration we have to record the response thrice means n equal to 3. Hence the total number of data would be 15 which are the minimum data set to show the linearity in NDA new drug application. Evaluation of the linearity is performed across the range of the analytical procedure. Range of the analytical procedure will be discussed separately in the coming slides. Now let me tell you about the linearity data which are required for submission. First one correlation coefficient which must be positive or plus 1, intercept must be near to 0 or 0, slope of regression line should be positive and coefficient of determination must be greater than 0 0.99. Now the equation is how we can get these data? The answer is straight line equation. In the coming slide, I will talk about this straight line equation. This slide shows an example of linearity through calibration curve obtained in HPLC method. This curve shows the different concentrations of the drug on x axis as variable factor while peak area is being taken on y axis as a response of the analytical instrument which is HPLC. <coughs> area of different HPLC peaks corresponding to different concentration of API were processed in Microsoft Excel to get a straight line equation and from this straight line equation we can get all the linearity data for submission. This slide shows the general idea to plot a calibration curve. Before plotting a calibration curve one should choose a suitable analytical technique. For example, HPLC, HPTLC, UV visible spectroscopy. After choosing a suitable analytical technique, the second step is to prepare a series of standard solution of the drug. Here standard solution means solutions of non-concentration of pure drug. As per ICH guideline, we need to prepare minimum 5 concentrations and for each concentration we record the response 3 times and get average of these responses. The type of response depends upon analytical techniques. For example, peak area or peak height in case of HPLC and HPTLC and absorbance in case of UV visible spectroscopy. Now we have the data set, concentration of the drug on x axis and response of analytical technique on y axis. We will put these data set in Microsoft Excel or Origin and process to have the straight line curve or calibration curve to get straight line equation which is y equal to mx plus or minus c. This slide highlights the anatomy of a straight line equation. Now we know that a straight line equation can be obtained by Microsoft Excel. Here 
I will explain each component of a straight line equation in details. A dummy straight line equation is presented here. <coughs> I start with y. So, y represents the response of analytical instrument because here we are taking UV visible spectroscopy as analytical technique, the y values would be absorbances. <coughs> The next component of the equation is slope. In this equation, 0 0.0072 presents slope of the straight line. Now, what is the slope? The slope denoted by m is the angle of straight line from x axis. You can see this in the upper straight line curve. The next component of the equation is x, which presents different concentrations on x axis taken as a variable factor. These are the concentrations of standard solutions of API. The next component is in this equation 0 0.0042 which represents intercept or C. Intercept in a very simpler way is the place where the straight line touches the y axis. If it touches y axis above the x axis, the intercept holds positive sign means plus c. If a straight line touches y axis below x axis, intercept holds negative sign means minus c. And accordingly, accordingly the straight line equation changes its sign. <coughs> if intercept holds positive sign, the equation will be y equal to m x plus c. If intercept holds negative sign, the equation will be y equal to m x minus c. Apart from the components of the straight line equation, another aspect is r square, which is known as coefficient of determination and ICH acceptance criteria for r square is greater than 0 0.99. Here R square denotes how well the data fit to a straight line. This can be understood by two straight line curves shown in bottom left of the slide. If all the data aligned in a straight line, R square will be greater than 0 0.99. If the data are scattered and not in a straight line, then R square will be less than 0 0.99, which is not acceptable as per ICS guidelines. In the coming 3 to 4 slides, I will explain interpretation of linearity and its correlation with pharmaceutical analysis. First data to support the linearity of an analytical method is correlation coefficient denoted by a small r or r in lower case. It shows strength and direction of linearity relationship between detectors response, maybe absorbance and concentration of API. Correlation coefficient can be of three types, positive correlation, negative correlation and no correlation. <coughs> In positive correlation, detectors response increases with increments in API concentrations, while in negative correlation detectors response decreases with increments in API concentrations, while in no correlation status detectors response does not depend upon API concentrations. Correlation coefficient must be plus 1 as recommended and accepted criteria by ICH guidelines, which means detectors response increases with increments in API concentrations. Coefficient of determination is another data in the favor of linearity of an analytical method. Coefficient of determination in regression model or R square tells us how well the data fit to a straight line. Data means responses of analytical techniques associated with API concentration. The significance of R square can be explained by these two plots where blue dots 
represent different data points. In the upper plot, R square is greater than 0 0.99. This is because all the data as shown by blue dots are aligned with the straight line, line in orange color you can see. We can understand this by taking an example when API's concentration is increased twice means 2x, detector response also increases with the same magnitude. It becomes double which is 2 by. If API's concentration is made 3x, detector's response becomes triple means 3y and it keeps going on. Now this is clear that the magnitude of change in concentration directly proportional to the magnitude of change in response of analytical method. These types of data are very well accepted as per ICH guidelines. This was the first case where R square is greater than 0 0.99. The second case is shown by lower plot where R square less than 0 0.99. Here we can see the data are not fitting into the straight line. This means the magnitude of change in concentration not directly proportional to the magnitude of change in response of analytical techniques. Although the response increases while increasing the API concentration, but with different magnitude. For example, <coughs> If API's concentration is increased twice, means 2x, detector's response also increases, but it may be 2.5 times or 1.5 times or likewise. This is the reason that R square is less than 0 0.99. In this case, analytical method is not considered suitable as per ICS guidelines. Slope of the straight line is another component of a straight line equation. Slope of a straight line shows the responsiveness of analytical instruments. For understanding the significance of slope, I am showing straight lines A, B, C, D and E having different slopes. The absorbance data at 20 microgram per ml and 40 microgram per ml were taken for studies. As we know that change in the concentration of API is 2x, 20 microgram per ml to 40 microgram per ml which is same for each line, but change in absorbance is different. For line A, the change in absorbance is 2.8 times. For line B, this change is 2.2 five times and this change in absorbance is minimum for line E which is 1.5 times only. <clears throat> if we see the figure we find that straight line A has the maximum slope while line E has the minimum slope. After observing the change in the absorbance in each line for 2x concentration change we can give the general statement that straight line which has maximum change in absorbance for a particular change in concentration shows highest slope. For same concentration change, if analytical method shows higher response or a straight line shows higher slope, this clearly indicates that particular analytical method is very sensitive to the change in the API concentration and preferred for analytical method development. This slide shows the next component of straight line equation which is intercept and now you know that intercept is the place where straight line touches the y axis at zero value of x. I would like to talk about the significance of intercept. <coughs> intercept represents detector's response at zero concentration of API. If intercept is positive or plus C, it means detector or analytical instrument is showing response even at zero concentration of API. It clearly indicates that there is some error or impurity 
which is showing absorbance even in the absence of API. While in case of negative intercept, we need to think about the solvent or blank correction. Hence, ICH guidelines recommend zero or near to zero intercept. Zero or near to zero intercept rule out the possibilities of any impurity or any blank and solvent corrections. Now, I would like to acknowledge to Professor Amrish Jha, Dean School of Media and Entertainment, GD Goenka University, for granting permission to use video recording facility. Acknowledgement to Mr. Abhishek Bashist, QA Manager, Vargaba Phyto Lab, Bhivadi, for his valuable suggestions, and Mr. Birendra Singh for video recording and editing. Acknowledgement to Dr. Mohit Sanduja for overall coordination. Thank you all for watching this video. Second part of this tutorial will include range, accuracy, precision, LOD, LOQ, robustness and system suitability criteria, parameters for analytical method development. I will post this video very soon on my YouTube channel Concept Connects. Thank you so much for watching this.